In this video, I'd like to show you how you can modify the asymmetric unit of your structure. So here we've got a structure, it's uh, called Timmy, and that's because I collected it with the son of a very good friend, and it's out of, it's actually um, calcium tartrate out of a bottle of red wine. There we go. Anyway, and we collected this, and it's a nice little structure. It's one of those continuous solid structures, a control G. You can see how this grows and packs into various different ways. So how do we start um, working with this? So first of all, um, I type fuse again, hit escape to get out of this mode. Now, you can see there is a, a spurious bond between this metal and that hydrogen. So one way to deal with this is uh, con dollar m. So all metals will have a conductivity of no more than seven. That will do the trick. So now we don't see those bonds anymore. And if I refine the structure now, control R is what I just hit. Uh, it does a refinement cycle and the bonds will stay uh, disappeared clear just to, to get a clear screen again. Second thing you notice is the hydrogen bonds here, so they're not very visible. So let's head over to the drawing module and I have set, uh, installed the extension module Draw Plus where we have an easy way to change hydrogen bonds sort of um, display so we, we can clearly see where they are. So first of all, the, the hydrogen bonding that we sort of submitted here uh, in, in this structure isn't actually ideal. So let's go back to work and uh, refine into the toolbox work. So this is where we're concentrating on in the growing area because there's different ways of assembling this. So atom to atom will actually give you a different asymmetric unit. It's the same structure, but just this the, define the asymmetric unit different. Uh, metal last gives you a really nice sort of, now we see three hydrogen bonds all within that asymmetric unit. The other thing that's still the case here is we see the tartrate molecule here and we see the metal here. But of course, some of these things bond to this. So if I go control G again, then we can see where this goes to. This goes to calcium one, which is this calcium here, and to oxygen six. So if I press F3, I can get my labels. So oxygen six is this one. So there's a bond between this and this. So you have to make a decision of what you want to actually show. So I think this is not a bad representation. You've got your whole molecule and you've got your calcium, but you might not want this. So you can actually do things and you select the calcium and you say, okay, I want to mode, mode grow and I just want to move atoms. So now you see all the atoms that are bound or could potentially or that are bound to this calcium. And if I click on this, it will actually move this carbon, this oxygen six over. So this, this doesn't now make much more sense because then obviously this is, this is a, a carboxylate here. So we can now continue growing this and uh, move this whole entity over. Uh, including that hydrogen that we messed out here and so on. So you can, we can switch over the, the asymmetric unit in, in whichever way you like. So th this is quite an amazing sort of feature really, because often you want to define an asymmetric unit that is more suitable for, for, for what you, what you want to publish. So let's just go back to, uh, Metal Last sort of gave you the best result here. So we're going back to that, to that structure here. Okay. Now, Another way to, to, another thing that you might want to do, F3 again to switch those labels off. Um, you might want to explore what we've got in terms of hydrogen bonding here. So one way to do this is HTAB. Now this finds hydrogen bonds by default with a maximum DA distance of 2.9 and a minimum angle of 120 degrees and it finds these. Now we don't see anything. If you go HTAB minus G, then it will actually show you each of those hydrogen bonds at least once. This is not necessarily always the best display, but it gives you a, an idea of what's going on. So if I go back to Fuse, there's another tool we've got in View and in Symmetry Generation, where we can actually look at the um, growing here and um, so bit, uh, hang on uh, packing is what I want and we can expand short context the hydrogen bond so if we use that slider carefully go all the way to the end so we can see the first and shortest hydrogen bond is from this to this and we can click on this and this will generate that bond on this side and that bond on that side so this is now building up the hydrogen bonding network um, based on that shortest distance that 
was found in the structure. So I hope you can see the potential of this. Oh, this is not what I wanted to do. So um, I, I, I had fused by mistake here. So going back here, I grow this again here and here. And then you can see the same one maintains and stays on. So you can carry on doing this. And I want to hit escape and not fuse. And you can zoom out and you can see that this is the shortest distance that there was, which doesn't, of course, necessarily mean it's the strongest bond. But there we go. It's uh, it's 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 how you can start building up a hydrogen bonding network on this. Another little tool that people are generally not so much aware of is um, if you wanted a symmetry equivalent position of this water molecule somewhere else, the way you would do this, you say, well, I would like to see whether this actually goes somewhere to here. So you can click on this, go on symmetry tools, and then go copy or move near, copy near or move near. So copy near, if I'm in this mode, I can now click on this, and this will try to copy it as close as possible possible to the other one. So this is a duplicate now. It doesn't matter. It's there. I could have gone move, in which case it would have moved it from there to there. If you then refine, this is where the um, molecule would stay. So we go fuse because now we've got symmetry equivalence. I do this again with move near. So escape first, click on this, move near, and we do this. And we now have moved it over. If I click refine or, or type control R, uh, then th this is this is where it's it's now going to um, okay, that is all for this little um, tutorial. Um, thanks for using Olix too. Oh, by the way, please uh, leave some comments on YouTube and let me know what you'd like to know. And if you've got any comments or if you'd like to know something else, just let me know. And I'm happy to uh, continue making little videos like this. Thank you.